Pretty awesome video there, huh? Mm -hmm. What message does it send to, uh, to the employees? They should want to be second, right? How's everybody's night last night? Good. Good? Exhausted, energized? What were you feeling like? What'd you do? What's some of you do anyway? Anybody get together? Hang out? No, no, but I did my 10 push-ups last night. All right. You said you're only going to do one, so you did 10. I did. That's good. Overachieve. Overachieve. Exceed expectations. What else? What else did we do last night? Anybody work on their stuff? Or you were just like, okay, Gary, a couple guys worked on stuff? Cool. Today's, uh, today's like a superpower day. It took everything. It, it took board breaking. It took looking at limiting beliefs, answering your why, just to get you energized enough to survive today. I promise that, okay? Because when we hit the marketing and everything we're going into, it is like your brain's going to have more things exploding because it's going to answer all the, the one question, right? Like lead generation, all that one question like, well, how do I get this? And how do I get that? And how do I get more, right? And what is brand? And then what, like, why the hell would I do yard signs? When do I do a door hanger? Should I do TV? Should I do newspaper? Like everything. And then how to do it so every single one of you could do it in the way you need to. So if you just want to trickle it in or you want to explode overnight, that's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to go through, first off, um, so let's, let's hear it for Phil because he did, uh, he did his 10 push-ups, which is nice. Great job. And uh, just so you know, Jamie, let's hear it for Jamie. He doesn't chew. He doesn't chew. And I know that because I, I have that right here. All right. So that's, that's really nice to see massive action. Couple of, I never answered. Uh, some of you guys know what the chicken is, and, and some of you don't. You want to know what the chicken is? Okay. She's like, I don't, I don't know if I want to know the chicken. So I just thought I wanted something crazy to throw on, on the wheel for guys, right? And I thought the chicken was going to be the spoof. What do you think the chicken became? The reward, the mascot. Everybody wanted the chicken. So we would spin the wheel, and, and when you would think they want like $40 or $20 or, oh, check this out. Mike never seen it. Take a picture of that pumpkin plan book on there. Yeah, I can win that, right? And you're thinking all this stuff, and, and then all of a sudden, the wheel spin, and they're like, chicken, chicken. I'm like, who ever seen that coming? So then what we did is, because the chicken becomes so powerful, every now and then, Rob stuffs the chicken with money. Then they really wanted the chicken. So I don't know, maybe there's only, I mean, Joe, how many chickens could be out there? Maybe six? Yeah. Six or seven in, like, probably eight or nine years now. So it's funny how I thought it was a spoof and then it turned out to be this motivating thing. And I just, I mean, if you want a rubber chicken, just Google on Amazon rubber chicken and, and you'll, you'll get one. It doesn't have to be a chicken. It could be a duck. It could be anything. For those of you guys that didn't meet, um, you know, Mike and Joe, why don't you come up real quick so they know who you are since you were just goofing off in Atlantic City for two days. And we talked so much about you for, <laughs> for two days. Yeah, so this is uh, Joe Tadaro. Joe's been with me for over 10 years. Um, he's the guy I was telling you started as a plumber, HVAC tech for us. So he's, he was in a truck, driving, doing the game, right? And then since then, he's played uh, sales managers and all kinds of managers. Now he's a director. So he's director of operations. He covers a huge segment of the business. He falls right below me and Rob along with Jim. And then we have Mike Disney here. And Mike is now, he started out just managing, which you're here, how long, a year? Almost. Almost a year. So, but Rob knows him a long time. He's, he's been a good friend. And so we brought him in because we knew if you're going to be in box stores, you're going to go in whatever. It doesn't matter if it's Home Depot, Lowe's or anything. You need someone to manage that. Right? If you want to explode it and you want these box stores, or maybe it's Walgreens, I don't care, or Walmart, you want them to look at you and go, I want to give you more. You need a thoroughbred that's going to run it. So he's been running the box stores, and we, when you started with us, where were we ranked in box stores? I mean, we were bad. Yeah, I mean, it fluctuated, but we were pretty poor. Like 100 or something, right? 140, yeah. 140. One time, yeah. And where are we at now do we normally run? We can be, we can be in the 60s. Okay, so, yeah, as high as 50, so. so 140, as high as uh, 50 now. That, you know, that's out of, we were 140, how many are there? Are there over 200 or? 180. Okay, so we were 140 of 180, which by standards, I guess, compared to the 180 guy, we were pretty good at 140. 
But that's the focus. Since then, now Mike also, he's the manager of the box stores. So he manages that, which means he has lead generators, a team of them. These are people that just, you know when you go to Home Depot, that person's like, hey, tell us about your house and they want to sell you solar or something. He has a team of those. He manages all the salesmen for the HVAC and he now manages also our outbound, um, our outbound people, which we have two full-time outbound people. So just so when you see these guys around, you'll, you'll know where they're at. And that was, none of that was a compliment. So go back and, and really? produce. Like no, don't, don't. <laughs> don't at all. Get results now. Get, get results. <laughs> The other thing, I, I was thinking of a couple, I'm always looking for these little things that maybe you don't know, but um, I'm sure, is anybody like a Bluetooth nut? You got that thing in your ear? I hated that thing, right? But what I hate worse than that little Bluetooth thing in my ear is, is I hate doing this, right? Because did you ever find yourself trying to do that and you're trying to get stuff done and then that one person says, what did you say? That's normally my wife. And I'm like, oh my God, it's pissing me off, right? So. This may seem like, why is Mike sharing this so simple? But I'm going to tell you, this is what I use, probably talk to most of you on the phone at one time. And you'll see me walking around the building with this on my phone, which allows me to do what? Everything, everything. So I'm never sitting stagnant if I got copies coming out the printer. I could have the conversation go to the printer. When you look at that little bit of time and minutes, it adds up. It adds up really fast. And plus it allows you to drive safe and all that other good stuff. This is at Staples or Office Depot for like, like 30 bucks, right? 30 bucks. Next thing I have for you guys before we do a quick snapshot review is I was uh, talking to you guys about, remember the, the notepad in the shower? And so I brought a bunch of these. I don't know if I'll hold it up and see who, uh, who tackles it and gets it. But um, so this is the notepad in the shower. You could look at this. I'll put it in the back of the table later. And so this thing, and just so you know, I Googled it on Amazon. It's like $8. That's, that's all it is. And it comes with, uh, I'll just show you what it is real quick. And guess what's cool? Now what somebody did, because they must have found out. Remember I was telling you what happens with, uh, with my family. They're writing notes and stuff. Now they make, this thing's called Aqua Notes. They make like Aqua Love Notes. You see, so somebody said, oh man, there's a demand or shared the story. Someone said, man, people will, will do that. They'll write notes to each other as they're taking a shower. Cool. So this thing just sticks in the shower. This sticks in there. And this pencil will write on this thing. All right? So I don't know. That's only for you nut jobs in there taking a shower and can't just take a shower and need to think of great ideas, right? Which over the next couple of days uh, and next couple of weeks, I'm sure it's going to happen more and more. You'll be thinking of things. So. We'll put that back on the, uh, on the table later so you can take a look at it. The next thing is, well, let me ask you a question before we dig into the review and meat of things. Now that you've experienced it, because one of the things, well, Warriors, you guys been through this, right? You've been back before you get it, but there's, there's new people like Troy and Jamie and, and Warriors. I'm asking you guys too. Um, now that you experience it, you see it, what other industries would benefit from this information, just so I know? Who would benefit from it? Pest control, sprinklers, roofers. Okay, how many friends do you know right now that are suffering? You have friends that are suffering. It's like, oh my God, they're not, they're not figuring it out. You could just see it on Facebook the other, uh, actually this morning, I think, a guy that I know, a real nice guy, friend of mine, he sent it to someone else. He's like, dude, this is the person I'm telling you, you got to go see. So we all know somebody. So I'm going to lead by example right now and tell you guys something. Um, one, I have a card here that says if you know somebody, you write down their information, I'll get in touch with you. You know I'm not gonna sell them on the phone, I'll get on the phone with them. If it's a fit, it's good. If it's not a fit, no big deal. You guys know I don't do no hard pressure uh, stuff at all. If you do, because lead by example again, if you fill out all four incomplete, so I know, and I'll reach out to them, the only thing I ask is this. It's not the Hoover vacuum stuff. Like every now and then I'd have, did you ever have Hoover vacuum come in your house? If not, you should because it's a great example of a sales process. They have no marketing. Their number one marketing is referrals. So I would have them come out because they said I'll get the free steak knives, right? Which really wasn't a great set of steak knives. But I just wanted to see the process of a company that's been around for I don't know how long, 100 years. You, can you imagine 100 years, no real marketing, and they grow year after year? You think they figured something out? So that's what I do. I bring them in so I can watch them. Um, so... But the thing that I did is I always gave them all my buddies' numbers. They, ne they were never going to buy a vacuum, right? They were like, 
they didn't even vacuum anything in their house. Their house was dirty, right? I'm not going to do that. I just ask you, put the four names down. You just send them a text and say, I put your name down for something. If it's a fit, cool. If it's not, this guy's not going to bother you at all. If you do do it, though, and fill out the four and give it to me before the end of today, I have a flash card for you, okay, a USB card. Now, do you think this is an empty USB card? No, of course not, because why the hell would you do it for a $2 flash card? Well, I got like, I think it's like six or eight very ninja items, items I could never even cover. I mean, how much can you cover within four days, right? I, I mean, I'm still, even when we're done at the end of four days, I can tell you we scratch the surface. You'll grow your business, but we scratch the surface. So on here is like six to eight of the most ninja things. Um, Jerry was asking, you know, where's all the places that you could post ads? I know that's a list on there. There's 52 weeks of culture, something you could do every week for your culture to magnify it. All that stuff's on there. If you don't want this, it's cool. I'm okay with it. But I'm a lead by example, just like you would want to do for your customers, all right? So I'll hand these out later, fill them out during break or something, hand it to me in full. And I guess if you put like Mickey Mouse and shit, I won't know the difference, right? Um, I hope it's a real person. And then I'll give you one of those. All right, questions before we get, we get started. Questions over the last two days, something you keep going through your mind, you're like, oh man, I hope he, like, when's he gonna get to this? When's he gonna get to this? Anything? Yeah, I got it. Yes? You, someone brought up about complimenting people, and you, so. Yeah, I don't know where you were when we said that, but what I was saying was a lot of times in the company, um, my employees, year after year, they're like, you know, it'd be nice just to get a thank you. Right? That's what they would say to me. And then I was so tired of not having an answer for it. One day, I don't even know how I thought about it. I said, well, how many people have you said thank you to today? And what do you think the answer always is? None. No, I didn't. So I said, why don't you lead by example? And I said, I'll tell you what. You go out and say thank yous the next couple of days. And if you don't get any thank yous in return, come and see me. How many people you ever think came back to see me? None. Ever. Because you've got to be willing to do it in order to get it done, too. Make sense? So that was the thing about um, complimenting. Yes? For your customer service department, what percentage of their salary is commission, roughly? For their chief points? Well, they're all hourly in there. They're all hourly, so what percentage of, of commission, what percentage of their salary, let's say they make 50000 Okay. And if 35000 is hourly, would the other $15,000 be Right now in our customer service department, we're at the size that we do not let them sell memberships no more. Okay, so they're only hourly. That's all they get. They have no opportunity to get commission. Our outbound people okay. get the opportunity to get commission. So the one person in there makes, um, outbound person makes $10 an hour. So figure that at 40 hours a week and her spiffs left month were $5,100. So your customer service department uh, there's not a, uh, is there a quota for the percentage of what you should be booking? Is there, so there's just no, nothing? I mean, there's no incentive no for them. Incentive. No. Look, you don't always need to, if you hire properly right. motivated people, I know we've become this culture of, I feel like, um, first off, we act like if they hit our target, and just so you guys know, this is really important. We talked about this yesterday. We always, we always get our must, right? What we want. Here's the thing we become this culture of, right? Do you ever give a tip at a restaurant and it really sucked, but you still gave them a little something? Why would you ever give something for sucky, sucky service? We become a culture of that. So it's also like if, if an employee's number is to hit this, should we congratulating them to hit the number we told them they need to hit? No, no. You congratulate people when they exceed their numbers. So no, we don't have a program, but that just changed in the last three months. If you have a small call center, the way we did have it is they could sell memberships and book calls, okay? If they sold memberships, they got $50 for each membership they sold. Memberships, $2.99, when we get to memberships, you guys will see that, all right? You're absolutely right when you're saying that because we're creating a culture of every, everything is based around making them superstars and rather right. than yeah, and if I give them something for this, next time when I say, hey guys, I want you to do, I want you to now ask for emails. They're like, oh, okay. And what will you give me for this? Right. It's like I train the rat, right? I train the rat. Like it, you say, go from here to here and I give you food. And it sits there. And if you say go here, it goes there and it's like, no food? I'll never go there again. And it comes back. 
That's crazy. You don't need to, need to do that. Not, not in a good culture, ever. Other questions? Okay, excellent. Today's map out uh, looks like this. So at 9.30 to 10.30, Warriors, you'll go in with Rob and you're gonna do Service Titan, QuickBooks, integration and understanding that. Um, Andrew, if software interests you, you might pop in. If it doesn't interest you, you know any of you Warriors can just come back and hang with us. It'll be cool. We'll be doing all marketing stuff today. 10.45 to 12.30, Joe T. That's when you're on, Joe T. 10.45 to 12.30, you guys will be doing sales processes and how to teach comfort advisors how to convert at the highest valuable um, conversion rate and average invoice. At 1 p.m., we do lunch at 12.30 like normal, right? Um, I'll be in here till one, but then at one, Warriors, don't make me wait for you in that room, okay? I got some stuff I gotta do with you guys. And then at 2.30 to 3.30, Mike H, Joe T, 2.30 to 3.30 again. You and our uh, dispatch manager will be working with the Warriors on how to dispatch for performance and increase those things. And then at 3.45 to 4.45, Jim will be doing a breakout for you guys on managing risk, all right? So you don't have to deal with any of the, the pain that, that we deal with a bunch of that stuff. All right, let's do a quick just, I want you just to, um, I just want you to just close your eyes or just sit there, don't write nothing, don't think of nothing. I just wanna just talk through the journey that we had so far so we keep build muscle memory, right? We started two days ago and in two days ago, we talked about you know taking action. Right, and the one thing that always uh, amazes me is that you know we're creatures of habit. So some of you have moved your seat, and some have went right back to the most comfortable place there is, the place you've been for two days. Right, and the thing I'll tell you is, if you come tomorrow, you may want to ask yourself, how has going back to the comfort zone been serving you? Probably not very well, because it's all about being uncomfortable that gets you the greatest success. All right, and then we talked about the power of parking lots and controlling your meetings. We talked about, you guys heard some resources and stuff that you might have wrote down. And then we learned the power of stop doing, start doing, and keep doing. That has to happen at every single meeting, right? You have to do that. From there, we have our maps that we're working on, our, our plans, which is gonna be real important. Today, we have to define it more and more. We go to dinner five o'clock, right, Jim? Five o'clock, and during the next break, I know a couple of you guys said you're already coming. You're not obligated. I've never opened, just so you guys know, I've never opened up to uh, participants at an event to come to my personal home and my dojo and train. It is open for you, okay? I can only do like 10 if you're interested, come. If you wanna come and you're feeling like, you know, you have a bad back or bad foot, like Gary said, well, my back and it, I'm like, like, I'm not gonna throw you on the mat and start choking you out. <laughs> Right? You could come and just watch. You could stand back, feel a little bit. You could just come and experience a part of my life of what I do. So that's open. You'll let me know on break time. We talked about wealth, freedom, and market domination. Right? This has to be something you live within, these different zones. And then from there, we dug deep into clarity set, mindset, and skill set. And you started to understand the deeper levels of making sure that we're clear. Most of the things in business, we end up not being clear. Right? And then we act like they should know and they should be able to just figure it out. Then in mindset, who has figured out that if you could just put the number one thing that just changes the game or keeps us where we're at, who agrees that it's mindset? Mindset's 100%. You figured it out because you, know, you went through your limiting beliefs. You're starting to think of your employees. Well, why, why does one tuck themselves in and why doesn't? Why does one win and why doesn't? Why does one person stay married for 100 years and one's divorced in a year? Why does one person treat health like it's the number one priority and then a bunch of people don't treat it, right? That's, that's all mindset stuff because you decide what's the priority and what's worth it, bless you. Skill set, we learned, well, there's probably you know, you don't have the skill set. Last night again, my wife has me still coaching this other woman again. Um, my wife like pimps me out and stuff, right? I, it's crazy, I told her, like don't talk to no more people. I'm like, you like pimping me out all over. But this woman is so educated on thyroid, and thyroid's a terrible thing. Just so you know, um, uh, one out of seven women have a thyroid issue, and most of the time when you figure it out, it's, it's late and you're dealing with it. Um, she has the skill set. She doesn't understand marketing and how to present to a group and stuff, right? So that's all the skill set stuff. It's like you want your people to sell double the amount of Mitsubishi, 
but either they don't know the skill set of the equipment, right? So they don't understand the function, how to use it, when to use it. They don't have the skill set maybe of sales and communication, right? They, they're missing a skill set. Most of the technical stuff you'll ever teach will not be mindset stuff. It will be skill set stuff. Unless you have one of those swab things like we had yesterday, and then it could be mindset skill set because they're like, oh, I don't see the value in it or something like that. So we went through that. Then we dug into action set. An action, like you either took action, took action, or you didn't take action, and you always are the person that says, yeah, you get these people that are like, yeah, I'm going to start a, a diet. I'm like, cool, when are you going to start? Well, Monday. Why? Because you just need to do as much more bad stuff as possible. And when you do the bad, they're like one more big meal. Do you think that reinforces we're going to get to the diet or reinforce the bad habit? It reinforces us not to make movement. And I know what happens. Monday comes and then it's Tuesday. How many of you made a New Year's resolution this year? Who made a New Year's resolution? Okay, some of you don't even want to raise your hand because you know that you made one and you didn't do shit with it. That's why you're like, it's better now just to say, no, I did not. Because you'll camouflage your own failure in that sense, right? All right, then we talked about alignment. You'll notice as you walk through the building and with my team, I'm constantly reinforcing alignment. Do we know where we're going? What is our plans? What are we doing, right? I'm making sure everybody in the company knows. So here's a little tip. We created an email that's called employee at gold medal service. That email is something we'll send a message out, email that we need everybody aligned on, right? Everybody knew visitors were coming in, not because they'll misbehave, because if somebody starts walking in and they're going to be like, whoa, what do you, who, who are you? The fact they know visitors are coming in, they're prepared for it. They're like, okay, I expect people to be walking through. That's the power of alignment. <laughs> then we talk about accountability. I love, I love, I love business owners who want to hold their employees accountable. But they don't hold themselves accountable to nothing, right? They're bad at what they do. So you have to ask yourself, at what level do you hold yourself accountable to serve the employee, to grow your business, right, to change yourself? Want your employees to grow? You need to grow. You got to be accountable to grow. Then we talked about the problem solving method, right? Very important. Identify, discuss, and solve. Have a parking lot. There's the formula. I love when people ask me, they're, they're always thinking there's this, this big pieces to stuff. Um, like, oh, Rob, you gave me an example the other day. One of the guys were asking for some kind of piece of something. Do you remember what it was? And I said, well, it's just this. Like, just, it's like a lot of times outbounds. People will say, well, what, what, do you have scripting and stuff for outbounds? Yeah. Um, pick up the phone, dial the number, say hello. Like, like we don't, what is this scripting stuff? The more you script things, the more you'll take a human and try to tell them to behave like a robot. You get that? I love when companies are, and, and they're like, script it, script it, tell them what to say. And then you go, okay, good morning, Mrs. Jones. It's a better and great day at Gold Metal. And the customer's like, um, do you come out? Hang on, don't mess up my script. You need a framework. And then you got to let people, you have to let ordinary people become extraordinary. You can never force them, but if you open a doorway, they'll get there on their own. Hey, you know what? There's an objective here. Be really happy, make the customer ecstatic, book the appointment, or, or close them on something on outbound. There's your simple framework. There's a couple strategies in there, but there's no written text, because anytime you do that, it becomes a crippling habit for people. You get that? And I know that that defies what a lot of people out there are teaching. They're teaching, they're like, hey, sign up for my program. I have all the scripts you need. Like, you guys know it. If it was that easy, you guys have scripts for technicians. You have scripts for dispatchers and CSRs. How's it working for you? It hasn't been working for you. It very rarely ever works for you. And if it does work, that's when you get, even if you call, I think AT&T, anybody have AT&T? I think their service is amazing. Clearly not scripted. They got American Express. You call them, it's not scripted. They're like, you know, oh, you're flying for this. Oh, that sounds like a blast. Like, is that a dog I hear in the background? There's, there's none of that. They, they learned that that whole time frame of doing that doesn't work anymore. So we got the problem solving method. Okay, then we went in and we understand what we love and we're great at, what we like and good at, don't like and good, and don't like and not good. That's your sweet spot. What should you outsource? What should you outsource? Well, sure to heck, everything you don't like, right, and everything you don't like and you're not good at, 
you need to find somebody or some place or something to do that for you. Every time there's no, nobody in this room that has something they hate to do and does it amazing. Nowhere in the world is there somebody that hates what they do, but they do it amazing. There's not. There's not. Because, again, your brain conditions, tells you, all right, I know I got to do it. I'll give it. No, they'll tell me I do 100%. You love it? No. Well, let me ask you a question. I give you something you love to do and something you don't like to do. Which one will you do better? The one I love. Okay, so how can you tell me you do this 100%? You can't. You don't love it. Make sense? Then we went into the struggle concept. That's the get real, right? That's the understand. No plan or your plan sucks, right? I always like people, I've always had a plan. Cool. Are you where you're at, where you want to be? No. Okay, your plan sucks, clearly. Otherwise, you'd get there if you had a plan. And you also heard my feedback about the one-year plan and three-year plans. Like, all of you in one time in business had wrote one because that's what the industry teaches you, and none of you ever followed it, and it never got you there. There's a book out there if you ever want to read it. It's called Rework. And rework, uh, I'll give my own thing on it for rework, is the book is like, you just need a plan tomorrow. You just need to decide tomorrow. And it talks about like defying different things. And then we talked about your mentors and your mentor sucks and your organizations on, on your in and you're staying loyal because you choose, you'd like to have this big whoopee blanket, right? This blanket of sense of false security, right? That's what it was. As long as my daughter had that blanket, she was pretty convinced that the monsters couldn't come out of the closet. Right? And that's what a lot of people have done. Then we talked about business failures and coming to grips with that. From there, we talked about pillow talk. Right? Pillow talk's that conversation you're having. Now, I bet the pillow talk has changed already in the last two days. It has to. It goes from, man, this sucks. I hate the people. I hate that. All this is going on to, oh my God, I see a light. You must, you got to hear what this is. When you self-check yourself and whoever you, if you do sleep next to somebody or something, and you tell them, when my conversations go from amazing opportunity to problems, I start to whine, give me a nudge and let me know, wake up again. Wake up. Because that, I hope that doesn't happen for you, but it could happen, all right? Then we talked about, from there, we went into, we didn't do a gap thing, but I cover it another way. We talked about wasting money. And we talked about dips and curves, right? Who was this really powerful for to understand this, right? And how you can cut that out just by moving in a different way and learning different things and putting it in. You always have to be how many steps ahead? How many? At least three. At least three steps ahead. See, most businesses are running today for tomorrow and they're not forecasting because they're busy doing what kind of work? And mules work. And when you're, and mules work is normally, is mules work um, stuff that you're going to do in the future or the mules works normally now? It's today. Today's the mule, right? The mule goes out, it pulls the thing in the field when it's done. The mule doesn't go, oh, you know what? Four days from now, I'm going to do this. No, the mule does the work like it's doing the grunt work today. You have to be three steps ahead in everything. I'm always looking three steps ahead Okay, who before every great season comes loses an employee? Of course. As long as you know that, you now can reinforce it and address it. Now, if you don't go out to your company and say, you know what, before every cooling season, I'll tell you, I've been in this a long time, here's what happens, guys. Um, we lose one of you because one of you think the grass is going to be greener. And I want to tell you this, it will never be greener than it is right now right now. And here's what we got coming up. Now the guy says, ah, uh, maybe I shouldn't. And then you, you say, and if any of you feel like you have been ignored or anything like that, you come and see me. Now let's address it because we don't want to lose anybody in the family. I call it transparency. I know what a lot of you guys would do. You're like, let's pretend it won't exist. And then the guy goes, um, you know that conversation that always happens? They're like, can I talk to you in the morning? And you're like, here it comes, baby. I can... I could smell it when it comes now, just by the way they walk, right? They kind of got that, like, that, that horror walk. I could smell it. That means we were too late on addressing something, right? Too late on addressing. Talked about money wasting. We talked about personal salary. I love people have revenue goals, but they don't have salary goals, personally. And at the end of the day, I mean, that's what's most important. I mean, to have a big company and be personally broke makes no sense to me at all. You could work for most other companies and, and, and become wealthy if you wanted to. 
And then we gotta forecast out our salary, right? We gotta forecast out what do we want in the future personally, personally. From there, we had our accountability statement, which I want you guys not to forget to go back and dig deeper in. Your accountability statement has to be hung where? Where should it be hung? Everywhere. Everywhere you can see it, so you're constantly reminded over and over again. The day you get up and go, oh, I haven't read that for a while, print it on color paper. Change it, okay? It has to be, don't become blind to your own accountability statement. Then we talked about your why, right? And then we talked about limiting beliefs and the power of the chains of limiting beliefs. I always looked at limiting beliefs like shackles, right? With huge balls of weight. And every time you smash through another limiting belief, a, a weight drops off and you feel a little bit lighter. And then you gotta be able to recognize that what? Another ball's been hooked on somehow. And then immediately you gotta do what? You gotta find a way, find a person to break through it. Then we talked about a lot about outsourcing, right? And the value of your time. Who thought understanding the value of your time? Actually, my wife was funny. Just so you know, the value of my time changed. In case anybody asked you. Um, it's 5,000 an hour now. Because my wife said, oh, for $3,500, she goes, I'll give you that. Can you go clean the dog shit tonight, she said. <laughs> I said, guess what? No shit, that happened last night. I was like 1030. I said, it's five grand. You willing for that? She goes, I'm not sure. And then, of course, it's, it's endless money, she thinks. So she's like, I'll pay you five. I'm like, we're not doing it. We're not picking up dog shit, right? <laughs> I, said, I, have, I said this. I said, babe, you know, I got people in the room. I got people in the room that said for 175 bucks, they'll come and pick up the dog shit tomorrow morning, right? You service for that, right? You do? No, I don't. There is one out there. No, I, I know. I know. Du duty calls or something, right? Yeah. I pay a guy $15 a week, and I have about an acre of property that my dogs run wild on, and this guy, he skips through my backyard. That's awesome. Miles, he high fives. He plays with my dogs. He's got the... Is it duty calls or? No, his name is Dr. Pooper Scooper. <laughs> okay, cool. Send me a connection for him. We need Dr. Pooper. See, mine is like a little area. It only, it's actually this rock area. I don't know if my dog loves crapping on rocks or not, but I just was tired of all the spots in the lawn, right? All right, so, but I told my wife, I got people in the, in the event today for 175, they'll come and clean it, but you just saved me more money uh, to do it. Then we talked about normal problems, right? Abnormal and pathological. Your team has to understand the problems. They have to understand what to look for so that you can solve those things, right? And we don't call them problems. We call them what? Who remembers? Situations, right? And when someone comes to you with a situation, what's the question you ask them? Who remembers? What do you think you should do about it? What would you do, right? That's what I want to know. They call you up and they're like, you know, the pipe's here, the, the plumbing's there, this is there, the thermostat's there, and I crashed there. You just ask them. What do you think we should do about it, all right? Otherwise, how are they gonna grow if you, every time they come to you, you give them an answer? It's the same thing you do to your kids. You want them to grow and learn so they can be independent on their own, right? Then we went to, and we talked about systems, right? And, and how easy it is to build a system. And I gave you copies of them. You could duplicate them and then start building them yourself. And then we talked about cheaper, faster, and what else? Cheaper. Faster? Easier. Easier. Because at the end of the day, who thinks they have some things in their company they're doing right now that's very, they made it way too complex. Like 20 moving pieces. Um, good friend of mine, Bassam, who owns the $100 million company, it's actually called Michael and Son, he told me, dude, you just make some shit real complex, don't you? He goes, I just do it like real easy. That's what he told me. I make it as easy as I can so you don't have to think about it. Makes a lot of sense. Then I depressed the hell out of you guys with the, with the, the, uh, the life meter, right? And um, you, the, you know what the worst thing to think about that is, is one day just came off of that. One day just came off your life meter, right? So you gotta make sure you're making those decisions. Now, we hope that goes that long. The people on that plane, their meter's out. Their meter's out. So I don't know if they had any regrets in eight minutes or if they even knew it was coming. Right, but just don't wait for that. Playful out 100%. This is your time to dig in like never before. And then we talked about personal identity, right? And then if, if we understand our personal identity, we have to understand what does our perfect day look like? Because if you got 10,000, 20,000, or 30,000 days, how many perfect days do you want? As many as you can. 
But if you don't even know what it looks like, you might say it's fun to play golf, it's fun to travel, but you haven't identified. As soon as your brain goes, this is the perfect day, the very perfect day for my life, your brain will say, I want as many of those as possible. Do whatever you need to get me there. That's what your brain will do. It's like, it's like this dog. That's how it's, it's just wired like that. Do you know why most people can't sleep at, at nighttime? Do you know why most, do you, ever, do you ever say this, my mind was running all night long, that ever happened to you guys? It's because you didn't take everything that was in your mind before you went to bed and get it out of your mind. Everything you take, that's why, and I mean, this is not new news, they say journal before you go to bed. Because if you journal about anything, you can just write, you know, sit there and repeat stupid shit, stupid shit, right? You can write anything, but the fact that you empty it, you'll sleep like you never slept before. That's proven statistically. Then we talked about your business identity. Some of you guys are aligned like Jerry. You feel like, hey, this is the way I am all the time. But then you ask yourself, well, maybe if the way you are one, maybe you, I got to make some tweaks and those tweaks will, will attract more of what I want. Maybe that difference gets more results. Then we talked about our perfect target, which I didn't really get anybody to share. So I'd like to just share real quick is what is your revenue target for 2015? And chances are, whatever your target was before you came here, it's okay if it changed. It normally does. By the end of today, I guarantee it changes again. It changes again, but that's okay. So revenue target. Now I don't want warm and fuzzy. I don't want you to make up something that you're not convinced. I just want like it's boom, it's three million. End of 2015, it's three million. Now we're, our first quarter is almost done, right? It's almost done. Nice part is most of us are going into the best next quarter of ever. All right, so target 2015, go. Revenue. Uh, five, four, uh, install and uh, Just give me a total. Six, so what that comes to. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Target. Five, five. Five point five. Five point five. Okay, because if you don't know the target, we're not gonna get there. Right? And you said it like two fifty like it's it's two it's two fifty, right? Remember, I don't care what anybody's is in here, and you guys don't care either. Dustin. Two point seven million. Two point seven. Stu. Three. Three. 1.6. 1.6. 300. Million. Million. 2.4. 2.4. Rogers, yours is? <laughs> 2.2, 2.4. Same company. Oh, shit. All right, we'll get that aligned. We'll get that aligned. Ron. 1.08. 1.08. Mike. 1 million. 1. Confident 1. Steve. The question is, is how I share it with you? Do you remember it? Is it 6? Six? Uh, 6. 6. Yep. At least you know I paid attention. All okay. Right. I didn't know I was going to be quizzed this morning, but I'm glad I, pa I'm glad I passed that shit, and I'm glad you're coming to train tonight with me now. Yeah, yeah. Just keep that rolling before class tonight, all right? I, I woke up energized this morning. Okay, Brian. 5.8. 5.8. Jamie. 3. 3. 5. 2. 2. Okay, beautiful. That's your target. Let's see if it changes before the end of the day. And it's okay if it will, right? Because we want it. It's not about five and struggle or two and struggle or 250 and struggle. It's about five, 250 and six with ease, without worries and concerns. So you can sleep at night and, and it's like a cash machine. That's what we want. And then we talked about what I believe is the most powerful, the five fundamentals, right? We talked about health. We talked about belief. We talked about relationship, wealth, and freedom. So important, any one of them are dragging you down. It is proven statistically, if you are healthy, energized, I don't care if it's one push up a day, if you get up and do that or do that throughout the day, your results in your business will grow. Proven, and nobody out there has been extremely physical fit and drove and had an unsuccessful business. Just doing that one thing change, changes things. And then we thought we had the whole hiring experience, right? You guys got to see that whole thing, how it unrolls, what we do, and we'll, we'll get to the recruiting and how to get more people in there. Then we talked about target versus goal. How is that to understand that? Target versus goal. It's a game changer. Don't even let anybody say goal. Goal is something that's used to being let down. And we talked about the theory of anything one is dangerous. And some of you are like, oh man, I got that one. I have to fix that. I got two CSRs and no call center to back me up or I have one truck and if it breaks down, I lose revenue that day, or I have one super tech and no more, right? Your goal, or you know, I have one maybe software and no backup for it. So you have to identify those. Then we did the decision-making criteria. Decision-making criteria is gonna be more important today than ever, 
because you're going to need to be doing marketing stuff and you'll have to say, oh, should I do this? Should I do that? I think I was telling someone at dinner the other night, 90%, oh, maybe over 90% of every marketing budget I've ever looked at. And, and I'll tell you, what, when, when guys I'm working with send me marketing budget, I'm, they're like, let me print it off the computer. I'm like, don't give me that computer bullshit, right? Like, write that stuff down on paper because I want you to own it. Because when you just print something out, it's like, here's all my mistakes. Write it down. Show me what you're paying, what you're doing. We'll talk more about this today. How much cost per lead, right? And then I can tell you all the time I find stuff they're overpaying for, they're doing SEO with no returns, they're doing newspaper, there's no returns, and we can just tweak that and change it. All right, and that brings us now to today. Today, now what kind of state of mind do you think we're gonna have to stay in to keep things running today? Amazing state, amazing state. So if I see you glazing over, I think I'm throwing shit today, okay? I think I'm, I'm throwing stuff at you to wake you up. And this is soft, so it falls within safety first, right? Because I need you so focused on this. Turn to page 72. We're on page 72. Price, convenience, and quality. Okay, think in the world, um, uh, the world today of businesses outside, outside your industry. And I want you to think, what is a business out in the world that is a price business? They work off of their selling, how they sell the market is all about price. Who? Walmart, one of the biggest, right? They say everybody who sells their stuff to Walmart never wins because they, they're at such a small margin, they always beat up everybody. Any other ones you can think of about price? What is it? Pay less. Pay less, price. Pay less. I don't know, Costco, I don't agree, sells on price at all. I would say Sam's Club and maybe BJ's, but, and not even them because they sell it as a membership program. It's like join the club. So I would say none of those actually fall. What about McDonald's? McDonald's, right? Low cost hamburgers, always push in price. They're never telling you, they would never go out and say, we got a $7 Angus burger. People would immediately move, move away. McDonald's. What else? Cell phone carriers, I would say, Sprint. I would say that, yeah, Sprint, I would say more than ever, they are changing this now because the iPhones and Samsungs have went into low service, but then they do this high quality product. So I see that as, as this thing that moves up. It's like uh, the service is high because it's new and then it comes down, right? And then all of a sudden something else new to the market. It's like GFIs or something, if anybody knows electrical, the, the safety um, receptacles, when they came out, they were like 20 something, now you can buy it for three, then they come out with the smart lock one, and it's like 27, then it comes down. All right, now give me a convenience business, a business that runs because it's so convenient to do it with them. 7-Eleven, Walmart. Okay, Walmart, convenient. Why is it convenient, Walmart? Everything all over the place. Open 24 hours, a lot of them, you could buy. They're so smart. Um, and if you look at the model, if you think about owning the customer, right, and why you might consider multiple trades someday, is the story is this. Me and Rob work for this customer eight years. We go back to do a job. Her whole kitchen's done. All new lighting and everything. And I'm like, we, wh what happened? We didn't do, what happened? Why didn't you call me? She goes, oh, well, the plumber who did the job had an electrician. It was just really convenient. I only needed that to happen too many times that I learned that I was losing customers all the time based on convenience. Because when someone else can come in and do a multiple things, I wasn't gonna get an opportunity. Walmart's learned that, what can you get at Walmart? You could get food, a tractor, underwear, guns, guns eyeglasses. eyeglasses, health insurance, your taxes done, Liquor. your nails done, Bank. banking, cell phones, I mean, I don't know what you can't get there. You could buy a car through them. What'd you say? Bathroom. Bathroom. They sell the one day bathrooms through Walmart, right? So you could get everything at Walmart. 
When you go into Walmart, where else do you have to go? What store after that? Nothing. I think Walmart.com sells caskets. Entertainment. Caskets. I would believe it. Entertainment. Entertainment. Everything. So that's a convenience play. <laughs> what else is a convenience business out there? McDonald's. McDonald's. It's all over. Get your food and drive away. McDonald's. Home Depot. Why is Home Depot convenient? For all your home needs. I'm, I'm wondering um, if you're... 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, all over the place, right? PetSmart. PetSmart, why are they convenient? They have all their services and products you need for your pet. So, but I notice all these convenient things are big box type stores and stuff that you can drive to. What's convenient for the home? What comes to your home that's extremely convenient? Amazon.com. Amazon, okay. UPS. Amazon... Zappos, UPS. Okay, let's talk about quality. Let's talk about quality out there. What kind of business is out there are quality? Nordstrom's. 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 I always say we are the Nordstrom's of business with the level of experience of Disney World, right? And um, I have one more I always throw in there. I can't even think of it now. Uh, Nordstrom's, what else quality? Apple? Anybody an Apple person? I think it's, it's quality. Harley-Davidson. Harley? I always listen to see if anybody's like, ah, you know. Okay. Harley? When we talk about brand later, we'll talk about Harley, right? About attaching emotion to something, right? Emotion. What else is a quality business out there? Lowe's. Lowe's? Okay. Lowe's is more quality than you would think. Home Depot, right? Is Walmart quality? No. No? no? Okay. American Express, I would say, is a quality vendor, definitely. All right, so now when we look at this, can you have a business that has all three, Brian? Yeah. You can't. You can't have a business. Walmart has two of the three, and look how big they are. All businesses can have two out of three, but nobody can have three out of three. Yeah, but Walmart's suffering too right now. Oh, yeah. Why? I don't know why. Well, it's a satisfied customer. <laughs> yeah, convenience. Convenience. What's more convenient than Walmart? Delivery. Online. Don't even drive your car there. Don't even go to the parking lot. So what I want you to now think of yourself is the constant struggle, especially in service businesses. And when I talk service, I'm talking landscaping, pest control, chiropractic, all these out here, is they're trying to do all three of these, but it's impossible. It's impossible to do all three and grow and win. So my question is, now all of you know a business in this industry that is a price business. Is that true? Almost everywhere on the planet, there's a, a, a company that does plumbing, heating, cooling, electric, or drain cleaner, one of those, and they do it off of price. Try to think of one. Do you have one in your area? He's a price guy? Who is it? said yesterday on that one advertisement, there's a guy in our area that said, yeah, we won't be beat on price. So. Won't be beat on price. Right, you got to frame that a certain way. But is he the low price in the area for sure? Oh, I don't know. Okay. All right, we don't know. Several of them. There's a lot of guys everywhere like that. Well, give me a name of one, a competitor in your area that's on price. He's always the low. Church Receptive. Anthony Haynes, Heating and Cool. Anthony Haynes, selling on price. When people talk about them and you talk in the shop, do you say he's a high-quality company? Absolutely not. Do you say he's convenient? Perhaps. Perhaps. He, he might have one of the two. When he can magnify, it's okay to be, look, I'm not telling you being price and convenience bad. I'm not telling you convenience and quality is bad. I'm telling you you have to understand what you want your business to be. You could push hundreds and hundreds of HVAC units at the lower price and still make a fortune. You're, you're, you're the quantity, the quantity company. So let's decide where some of you want to be. Who wants to be, and remember, there's no right and wrong, you just got to know where you're going to be. Who wants to be the price and convenience person? Work off massive quantity. Very, like nobody, right? Nobody wants it. Because it's, is it a whole lot more work to work off price and create convenience? It is. It's a whole lot of work, okay? Who wants to be convenience and quality? Convenience and quality. Because when you're convenience and quality, you're going to be and get the very best what? The highest price. You're going to be the highest price person probably in the market. I don't want 10 million customers. 
I want a million customers that will pay amazing price to get the convenience and quality. Now knowing this framework, that has to be in the language of the company. Right, when somebody says, um, hey, we're looking for the very lowest price, I'm like, oh yeah, that's not us. I mean, we're definitely not the Walmart provider here, just so you know. So if you're looking for that, it's definitely not a fit. If you're looking for convenience, we're gonna have the guys here on time, seven days a week, 24 hours a day when you need us, we'll be here, that's who we are. Okay, and if you're looking for the highest quality, the highest quality in the person that's going to come out and deliver the job, install the job, the highest quality in the product, highest quality, like this is us. This is us. Yes? Is there any statistics on, you know, individuals and how, how many prefer which category? I've never seen it before. I can only tell you that the big conglomerates that I've seen is the only feedback I have on it. Yeah, and just studying like, like okay, so Disney World falls where? Definitely lowest price, right? And convenient? Disney World? <laughs> no. Convenient quality. quality, convenience. And I mean, the convenience is only when you're in there. I mean, it's not convenient for me to go to Florida or California or wherever they're at, right? But high quality. Is Disney suffering at all, really? No, isn't that amazing? Is Nordstrom suffering? I don't hear Nordstrom's going out of business at all. You heard Kmart went out of business. You heard linens and things go out of business because they were trying to do what? They were trying to do price and quality. Can't do it. Because in order to have quality, I have to buy good products. And how do I buy good products and put it at the lowest price? It, it doesn't work. JC Penney is losing some stores and so is Sears. Yeah, and I don't know where I would fall. I would not fall JC Penney's, and we have one in our area, as quality at all. I would throw JC Penney's as like, is probably the, the Walmart of a, just a clothing store. Not that I don't buy some stuff there, but if I look at JCPenney's and Macy's, I put Macy's above it, right? Because Macy's, um, now, could, you can have quality convenience and you can float this at different times of the year to fill the gaps, right? But you don't want to be known maybe as the lowest price. All right, tell me, tell me what you just heard that's different than what you thought of before or what just sunk home for you. Stu, what just sunk home for you for this? Well, just that uh, I, I've, I've known these, these things before. When I get objections, I, I bring up mm -hmm. the same kind of thing. Instead of convenience, I think we're talking about equipment. But, uh, Quality? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's what you'll find out. I'll ask you guys. Well, you probably are quality, most of you, and maybe some of you aren't. Like anybody who's maybe selling, I don't know if there's anybody that's going to say Goodman, and maybe there is, Goodman's better than Train or Carrier or Lennox. Right? I don't know if anybody's going to say that. But people will sell Goodman. So they're going to try to do convenience, but then they're suffering on, on price because they're trying to do all three again. Right? I always ask people, if, if you know that you're quality, like Stu says, I've heard this before. If you know your quality and convenience, I say, cool, so you're open seven days a week, 24 hours a day, you'll do an install on Sundays, and most people go, no, I'm not going to do that. Oh, good. So your quality, you're not price, but you're not convenience. So you're missing one of the legs to stand on. If I take one of your legs, right, you've got to hope you could do this forever, and some people will when they lose a leg, right? Or this is always going to be stronger, always going to be stronger. Does this make sense? Write down on, on the sheet what yours is going to be. Write down what yours is going to be. How do, just not really to do with that, but yep. you said Sundays. How do you handle holidays? And We have guys that are on call on holidays. There's just a rotation holiday comes in. Just what it is. We got guys that ask to do holidays because they get the emergency fee. They get a hundred bucks of it just to drive out there and leave their family. Do you do you schedule installs or stuff on holidays, or do you just kind of no? But if somebody goes down and I have to, I'll do an install on a holiday. Okay. Yeah, our guys will step up and do it, but, but that's you the rarity. Schedule that like a like a normal no, Sunday or anything. No, and it's not because of the employees, because the customers don't want it done on a holiday, right? They don't want it done on a holiday. You, you, but you do what you need to do. Yeah, I do what I need to do. I mean, did you ever have an install you couldn't do of some kind and the customer was really upset over it and it caused you all kinds of headache and stuff? We just tell them, hey, I'll put you up in a hotel for a day. Go to the Marriott on us. Have a good time. Swim in the pool. Bring your kids there. 
if I have to, and, and I put $50 on the thing for you. So eat some pizza and stuff, have a good night, watch a movie. Now, why, why wouldn't I put out the fire, satisfy them, and hold that job out? Why not? They're telling people now, yeah, they couldn't come, it's a little inconvenience, but we spent the day at, at the Marriott. It was cool. We watched a movie, the kids swam in the pool. You see what I'm saying? Okay, let's go to the next one. But that's after you've already sold the job. Well, we sold the job and we can't get there. Or so we tell the guy we can't get there and he doesn't want to close the job. And we say, I'll tell you what. I know there's a lot of people that are going to say they're going to come. And then some will come and they won't finish the job. And then you're even going to be more mad. I'll tell you what. We'll throw you up in a hotel. Let me call my manager. We'll come the next day. Who else are you going to do business with? I mean, you know you're going to do business with us. So as we build towards marketing now, you have to understand when you're marketing. And sometimes you'll market for price to attract bait. And sometimes you'll market with price, but you're going to use, talk about the value of convenience and quality. You have to know in marketing, what are we talking about? How are we moving the conversation? The next one is Jay Abraham's. It's three ways to grow a business, right? There is, and... Before we get to this, Warriors, just so there's not a big distraction for them. Rob, you're going in the other room, right? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Warriors that are going in there for service tight and get out in the kindest, loving way. <laughs> no, you don't need to go in there for that. You need to hear this. Right. Yes. Go ahead. No, because that's not their position to say it. Their position is to say, look, you're looking for the lowest price, no problem. Let us get a, an expert out there. He'll help you make a decision either way. Okay? Yeah, I, I'm going to move. They, people that are asking for price are normally uneducated to understand what they get with a lower price. Which every one of you have went to buy a car and had a number in your mind you would spend, and I bet almost every one of you spent more. Every one of you have went to buy, a, it happened to me three or four years ago, flat screen TV, Best Buy. I'm thinking I'm going to buy a flat screen TV for 800 bucks. Little did I know, $8,000 later, two Samsung, because my wife says, well, if we're going to get it for the front room, might as well get it for the bedroom, right? Blu-ray. I didn't know the monster cable had to go with it, right? That was like 180 bucks. You can't get the bracket just to sticks it to the wall. You got to have the one that will move, right? Which I've never moved the damn thing, right? $8,000 later. I thought I was going to spend 800 bucks, you know? You never disqualify a lead. Never. I just, I always look at it like they just don't know what they're asking for yet. That's all. They just don't know. All right, now we're going to learn a big thing where a lot of you guys um, are broken. <laughs> Wrong fit, that's good. Women are never broken. I was talking to the men, just so you know. All right, page 73. Page 73. All right, so um, three ways to grow a business. Number of customers, right? Number of customers, you need more leads, more leads, more leads. This is normally the delusion that most businesses are in today in the service industry. Mike, I need more, I need more, I need more. And I'm like, cool, so that's a good story. Totally wrong. That's why you got a problem. Um, average transaction. Most people get confused. They're like, oh, you're just going to tell me to charge more money. I never tell anybody that shit. Average transaction can be more things during that time or um, not just raise the price. So a lot of times I'll see guys, they'll be like, um, oh, you want me to raise my price and do a, a higher price furnace? I'm like, no, I want you to do a furnace with a sump pump and a water heater and a, uh, and a garbage disposal or something. Or I want you to do a furnace with an attic fan and a humidistat. Don't raise your price, okay? Raise your average transactions by giving them more stuff on the buffet. Again, Walmart knows when you walk in, you went in for a sweatshirt, you left with milk, eggs, a sweatshirt, and bought a tractor. 
I don't cut my lawn no more, so that didn't happen no more. But I'm just telling you that's what happens. Do they care? Their goal is to raise average transaction, but they don't raise the price of their sweatshirt to make it. They educate why you're here. Don't come back again tomorrow. Get everything you need. It's so convenient. And then there's frequency. Frequency is the repeat business. How many times can I get you to come back for more stuff? Now, I know some of you know the answer. In the industries, most service industry, most business today are in the one-time transactional value. I used to be in that business a long time before I knew any better. They come in, and this is how the sales gurus teach you, almost all of them out there. Come in the door, big ass sledgehammer. Coming for you, Troy. Hey, you need all this stuff done in your house. You need panel boxes and furnaces. And you say, yes, I'll buy it all. And he's like, boom, right? He just slams you. He's like, ah, got it all. That's a one-time transactional mind. I'm in the lifetime transactional business. See, when you're in the lifetime transactional business and your employees know that everything I do today gets us closer to how much in seven years for me? How much? 50,000. Everything today, I don't care about it just today. I want the 50 over 7. Make sure you don't mess up. But the one-time transactional company, hey, explore so you can find all kinds of shit. Boom, right? Those are the customers that call you. They feel like they've been raped, let down. When do they come back? Tell me when they come back. Never. Because you're educating them on a one-time, your culture has become a one-time transactional value business. Most crippling, crippling culture of all time. I'm in the lifetime transactional business. I say seven years, 50. I have now second runs and second generations we're working for. And we're only in business 20 years. 20 years, right? Remember my Uncle Mike story. We're working for the daughter, the bro all kinds of people. So here's what I want to know from you guys is where, where do you think, not where you are before you came, because I know where most of you are. Most people ask me, I need more leads. I need more leads. I want to know what is the one right now that you know you need to do that changes the game, which would literally now change the target you gave. So just tell me one of the three. Don't give me all three because I'll talk to you about how we raise the ceiling, lower the floor, and do a combination, right? But there's one that's more important. Jerry, where are you at? Average transaction. Average transaction. Uh, well, you know, we'll put a little check marks there. Okay, Amy. Two. Just average transaction. Listen, you've already done ten push-ups and over and exceeded, right? You can only give me one. Which is the one? Uh, the frequency. Okay. It's two. Andrew. Average Roger, give me what your answer is, even if it's not the same. Thank you. Because I don't want you just to listen to him and be uh, like, I know you're your own man, but I want, it, I want to know. Brian. Okay, industry, everybody's in a different place. Now again, like I said, right, we're gonna learn a bunch of stuff where you can do all three, okay? Guys that needed, who said they needed more customers? More customers, okay. When guys tell me they need more customers, here's what I always say. All right, cool. Your conversion rate on service is always over 80%. And your average invoice on HVAC is over 700, right? And your average closing rate on, um, on installs is over 60%, right? And when it's average transaction, um, I mean, when it's number of customers you, you need, you already have a solid outbound customers. You talk to every existing customer every 90 days, no matter what, okay? If you're doing all that, then this is true for you, okay? Guys that are on average transaction, that means you have plenty of leads that are always coming on, and if your average transaction, your frequency, you already are doing what I just said. You talk to your customers, not by direct mail, 
you call them every 90 days, okay, and you have that type, then I agree with you, average transaction. Average transaction is normally um, communication and understanding the process of one, two, three close and one plus one models, and we'll get to those. Frequency, okay? If you say that you need frequency, and frequency is a marketing issue most of the time, um, then that means if it's frequency, you have unlimited new customers coming in, and you're really great at raising the transactional value by offering options that make total sense, not because you offered it, because they asked for it. The power of a customer saying, hey, can you look for this versus, hey, did you notice this is two different things, two different things. One of these is always the game changer. And I didn't say that to change your mind on which one. I just need to make sure when we plow into strategies now, you pick the one that fixes it. And now here's the magic. If you had frequency and we fix frequency and we learn how to do this 30% better, an average invoice and transaction, you're good, and we just throw 5% on this and 5% better on these, what can happen to your business immediately? Immediately. Most of the time, it's because you might have known this or you've had some fuzzy knowledge on it, or you know it, but you don't know what to do with it. You just didn't know what to do with it. What is the strategy how to make this frequency happen? When we get to cross-pollination, if you are a multi-trade, person for that, this, and this, you'll find out that under frequency, frequency can be easily multiple trades, right? You'll need me back for more. We do more stuff. If it's average transaction we need, multiple trades or affiliates for both of these can create more frequency and more average transaction, because why I'm here, I can do your plumbing, your electrical, your HVC, your waterproofing. And average customers means that I can use either multiple trades or understand referral programs to help generate or affiliate programs. I go to a sprinkler company, they have a bunch of customers, I have a bunch of customers, and I could get it that way. Questions on this. These two things are such an important foundation to understand that we could spend we could spend four days just on um, where'd my other one go? Did I have a double sheet or something? Oh, there we go. I was over here. We could spend four days just on mapping out your business for price, convenience, quality. What convenience really looks like? How to do it? When to do it? How to promote it in your marketing? How it's in your sales process? Quality, what does it look like? How do we get the best quality at the best price? How do you partner with the best vendor? And then we go over to here to customers, average transaction in this. Andrew. Yeah, I just wanted to share something. This is really similar to um, another uh, process that I learned, which was um, included those three things along with your conversion rate and um, profit margin. It talks about increasing all five of them by 10% each. Yep. Yep. It's, it's, I think really powerful stuff here. Yeah, most of the time you have a formula, but you, didn't, you don't know how to either execute it or you don't have the mindset or the skill set. My job is to dumb it down and I'm going to give you the plug and play pieces we'll be going into, right? This is the foundation of marketing. Other questions about that? Now this here, you guys heard the answer, right? You heard the answer. Um, Ron, what business are you really in? Marketing. Business of marketing, right? And we don't want to confuse that with, we know we're in the business of marketing, but if I had a customer, I don't tell them I'm in the business of marketing. I would tell them this is my business that I'm in, right? But the philosophy wise, you're in the business of marketing. Now flip to page 75 and, and level up, get your state in mind. There's just going to be a bunch of questions we got to plow through and these are going to help define for us. Thank you. You already sent me the dog pooper guy. Thank you. Yeah, my wife says, why are you not talking about business and talking about dog shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. 
Tell her Mike wants to come pick up our dog shot. You ought to come to my office and see what the conversation is. 99% of the time. Dog shit? No, shit in general. Okay, because that's what you do, right? I mean, that's, and that's good, man. That's good. As long it as we know. It doesn't matter if you're talking about building a new house. Some about yeah. shit will come up. Yeah, that's awesome. It's all right, number one, so we're going to answer questions and then we'll do a couple shares, we'll move through this. So this is going to be defining our avatar, okay? How many, well before we do this, let's ask the question. How many of you have a very clear defined avatar? Very clear. Now your avatar is, again, I take um, the magic wand and I say, Amy, I can deliver to you the very perfect customer the one that never complains, loves to pay a lot of money best price, they, you love working with them and serving them, ready? Boom, here they are. That's your perfect avatar. Most companies don't understand the concept of avatar. They market to everyone. So when you market to everyone, you attract everyone. Every now and then you get a win. And then when you're struggling and you're marketing maybe an Angie's List or you're getting Walmart customers, how do you deal with a Walmart customer who's been conditioned to buy on price and you want to sell them on convenience and quality? How do you do that? I don't know. If you could teach me that, maybe I'll change my model. I don't know how to do that. They're conditioned. They're full-time Walmart people. They love the convenience and the price of Walmart, but I'm super high quality. That's why my pet peeve always is you don't need sales training. You're broke. Your marketing's broke. A sales trainer, I'll get to you one second. A sales trainer should come in and go, look, I'd love to do business with you. What's your avatar or your customer? I don't know. Okay, what are your bad customers? Where do your customers buy? They buy at Walmart? Yeah. I love, I love to take all your money, but here's the deal. You need a marketing expert first. Once you get a marketing expert and you change that and get tons of leads and they're buying and got you to 70% or 80% conversion, bring me in. I'll take you from 80 to 95 now that guy can position himself as a guru in the market because if someone could take you from, from 80 to 95, he's worth all the weight in gold as long as it's with integrity and follows everything. But otherwise, he's a ripoff. He's outside of integrity because he knows for life you'll need him because it's very hard to sell cheap-ass people. You need all that stuff that foo-foo shit. You need to say, well, let's talk to the husband and where are you looking to make a decision today? Yeah, cheap people. And then you have the nerve, the nerve in life to go to your employees and say, your conversion rate's really bad. You need to be able to do this, this, and this. I always say, bullshit. They're doing nothing wrong. You're doing it all wrong because you don't even know this. You don't even know this. You want them, you go out and sell that cheap ass customer and you're probably the best there is and you might have trouble with it. Make sense? But we have to identify who has their avatar identified. Who's got it in here? This is the perfect customer. Perfect. Give me some things, Brian. Single female, 35 to 45. Uh, 30 to 45, did you say? Or 35 to 45. Okay. Same thing with the married couple at the same age. Both 14. Okay, married. Okay. They live in a residential home? Mm -hmm. Do they own the home? Yes, they do. Do they like to use credit cards? Yes, they do. Okay. How many in your customer database are females that are single and married? I don't have any single married. I guess. How many in your database, you know your avatar, how many in your database right now are females that are single and married that fit your avatar? Okay, 75%. Because you profiled your list? We have. Yeah, we've got some on that. Cool. So I'm going to give you the easiest way to do that. And most of the time I'm going to tell you, now which is the best one of the two? Is it the married couple? It's the single. Cool. So in all your ads, it's probably all your marketing spells out and says, we work with help single female people make decisions, right? No, that's not what my ads say. Okay. So here's the first part. Most of you, and Brian's got a pretty good grip on avatar, but until you do a analysis, and you could write down Melissa data, Melissa data, until you take your database, send it to Melissa data and say, give me a profile of it, you don't know what it is. 
Now, the fact you know what it is doesn't mean what you want. If you're struggling with, um, and Ted's laughing his ass off, right? I know, well, what, I know. Well, what is Melissa Data? Melissa Data is a, a company that has a list you could buy, but they'll profile your list. They'll profile your list. You give them this list and you tell them I want it profiled. It will spit out what your avatar is. Are they married? Are they single? Do they live in houses? Do they love credit cards? Now, I love when people tell me, you know, my customers love credit cards and then they got the little symbol in the bottom. And then they tell me their, their avatar is 60 years old and the credit card symbol's this small. I'm like, don't bullshit me. Because if they're 60, they can't probably read super great. They got glasses on. You need to be like, here's the credit card. We collect Amex and Visa. Boom, right? So it's, it's a mixed message. You have to know this. You have to know this. Melissa Data will be the profile. Once you get the profile, you can make a decision. You can make a decision. Should I change my marketing to attract different people? I will tell you the statistics that I blew away. It's probably five, six, seven years ago, um, maybe seven years ago. I went to a, a Next organization event, and they had this woman that says, uh, it was like ex a woman buys, or Wanda, they called her. I don't know if you guys ever heard this shit. Wanda, Wanda. I sat in that room, and my question I always ask myself in my head, so you know, I normally don't let it come out. I'm like, what if that's total bullshit? Like, I didn't know. I'm like, what if it's so a lie she's saying? What if she doesn't even know? Are you telling me in New Jersey is the same as Texas? The woman's buying, making all the decisions. So I went on a mission. It's like a mission from the marketing God. Talk to me. I said, for the next 18 months, I'm going to study. I want to know who calls in that phone. Are they male or female? I want to know. I want to know who's home if it's male or female. And here's what I learned on my 18-month study, and I did everything to hold back, not selling this woman a big letter that says bullshit on it. I found out in 18 months that females we were working for only in New Jersey, I don't know for you, 51% of the time were calling. 48% were male. 1%, you don't know what they are. You can't ask. You can't ask. That's, almost, that's enough 50-50 for me. That's close enough to 50-50. Then I learned, then I learned when the man calls and the woman's home, our conversion's high. When the woman calls and the man's home, our conversion's high. When the woman calls and the woman's home, our conversion's lower. We had to figure out a strategy on how to deal with that. What was, what was that strategy? The strategy was to reframe everything on the phone call a lot stronger on, you know, hey, there's going to be a bunch of information. You know, will you be the one making the decision today? Um, I just want to make sure that we can help you get this done. We needed to understand that. And when they said my husband's home, no worries. If the husband wasn't home, we need to make sure when the guy got there, he was empowering the woman to help make a decision. You know what I mean? Most of the people go there and they don't empower people to make decisions. They hope they'll make a decision. We empower them to. Once I knew, now, here's how my ads were messed up. All my ads had a husband with a phone and a baby in it. That wasn't attracting the men. The men were like, look at this guy holding the baby at home. Ridiculous. Why is he not at work? So, so a guy flipping through the ad didn't attract that guy. It didn't attract the man, 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 right? It attracted the woman, but we were missing out. Like my pet peeve always is when... When guys have, and I hope you, I don't know if you guys do or not, you know, they have a truck and they got a happy family with a dog. Andrew's like, I love it. I love the dog, right? But here's the deal. If you're allergic to dogs, you're going to call the van with the dog on it? Yeah. Oh, and then some people put the cat and the dog. Well, I don't like cats. So the fact you even like cats, I don't want to talk to you. And if I'm allergic, that's a double whammy. That's the power of how your message has to be so aligned. Second thing is once they give me the report, now I can make a logical decision. Is that who I want to work for or do I change my message to attract my perfect avatar, my very perfect avatar? And then I have to make sure that message just pulls them in. I want it to repel who I don't want. And that's why I'm asking Brian, well, if you know this information, which is great, tell me how many is each. Because when you, do I have to send a different type of direct mail to my existing list that's female and single? than I do married. Of course I do. 
Hey, just to remind you, uh, single Mrs. Jones that's not married no longer, um, the expert that comes to your house, he'll be wearing a very large ID badge. You'll know when he's there. He'll be pulling up in our truck that's labeled our business, okay? I need to make her feel so empowered and assured she's safe. Because if you're a single woman, are you thinking like, oh man, I can't wait till a plumber comes. <laughs> Probably clean and I'm going to feel safe. You're not thinking that shit. But the married person's like, like my wife's like, hey, maybe be home or be close or, you know, so the carpenters come in, right? Yes, sir. Um, when we call for folks, you guys, uh, I always call my wife and say, let me know when he gets there. What does he look like? And call me as soon as he leaves. Because who you called did not leave you as a man assured enough that, that you were going to, that she was going to be safe. If your wife was going to Disney World alone with your kid, call me when you get there, babe, and let me know Mickey Mouse didn't buck you up. <laughs> no, you would never. Because you know she goes there, she'll feel safe. She goes to Nordstrom's. Are you worried about her? No. Goes to Walmart, maybe. Parking lot's crazy. Walmart over here, right? And, and North Brun's crazy. Is that why Eric was worried about you? He probably was. He's always worried about it. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, when, when the guys call and tell me, hey, our, our guy, we use uh, PortaSoft. It's a water softener company. Yep. Uh, and they, call, they do what you're suggesting. Yep. And it's great. It really is. And they, they you know, it gives me more comfort. Right. Because when I'm not there, I got it. And, yeah. You know, she knows what to look for. Our customers leave keys underneath the yeah. mat. I told you they left our guys home with their child. That, because we reassure them we're so safe. We're so safe to come to your house, okay? It's like the cops coming. You don't have to, well, most areas, I guess. In most areas, the cops come, you don't feel unsafe, you feel safer. Maybe in some areas, you feel unsafe. Maybe you feel unsafe. All right, so this is Avatar. This is what we're gonna identify on the highest level right now. I understand, I'll get to you one second, Amy. I understand that as we go through this, you may not have some of the answers, but I want you to just think in your market. You know your market. You know, who's, you know who's at the golf course. You know who's at Nordstrom's. You know who eats at McDonald's and who eats at Hands. You know this. We'll define it the best we can. Then you could do the Melissa data profiling. Then you could align it, and then you could check your marketing message. I've propelled more, more companies by helping align the marketing message than anything because they've been attracting all the wrong people, right? Question. When you have your avatar, how do you know these marketing companies like, you know, lead generation companies, how do you know what kind of they're attracting? They're attract? Oh, perfect. Because I share with them my avatar. Okay. So they build the message and the program to be completely aligned I mean, with my avatar. Like, um, like, let's use Porch, for instance. Uh, the you won't. You won't. Okay. Unless they allow you to go to a landing page and then take them to a landing page which talks to this. Do I want, most people say, no, give me all the leads you want, give me everything. No, don't waste my time with Walmart people, please. They're not gonna buy, they're not gonna pay the service fee, they're gonna be pissed off, they're gonna complain about the price. No, I don't want you. Phil can have them. I don't want them either. Okay, good, good. I don't want them. This whole like we feel like we have to serve the whole world stuff, Go to Haiti or something. Go do something else. It's not in this. It's not in this. There will be a person out there, a business, that loves it. They love it. They love price. And that's good. You send them to them. Yes. That help? No, not really. Oh, so then I, I messed up. Tell me well, again. that's okay. But Porch, you won't know. So Home Depot, don't so get leads they, from them. Yeah, yeah. Porch is through Lowe's, right? Yes. Now you got to test it. You do it for three months. So See your conversion rate, see if it's matching your avatar. If you're not closing high and closing high dollars on the right, you get rid of it, you don't do porch no more. So you test for three months, is that your average? Three to six months, depending on the program. Three to six months, yeah. Pay-per-click will attract your avatar because they could geo and all kinds of crazy ninja stuff, right? Good? So the, oh, um, so the Melissa data, you're saying I, you can buy a profile list for your area? You could do that. Or I can send them my customer list and figure out what I'm You can do that. I'll have to talk to you a little more about You can do both. Yeah, there's tons of companies out there. You can do both. I only say Melissa Data because I've used them. Um, the profiling has been really good. I do it every three years, the profile. 
Why would I even do it every three years? Because changes are usually. People change. Environment changes. My customer might change. If after three years I'm looking at my conversion rates not going higher, my average invoice, my marketing's broken. Either my marketing or my guys or my some system in the in the gold medal universe is broken. Yes, sir. So to eliminate like wasteful marketing, is is there something that's incorporated in this that will actually find you your avatar? Yes. Once you know your avatar, there's tons of companies that will tell you, oh cool, what do you want? You want this? Oh yeah, here's a list of them. Go talk to them. Now you just gotta know how to talk to them. But here's a list. Go talk to them. I'm going to show you guys. We're going to get how do we make it a cash, how do we make it um, not, a, not a lottery machine, um, but a vending machine. See, when you play the lottery, you put money in and you hope for what? You hope for it. How many times does it, does it happen? Very, very rare. The vending machine, you walk over, you put a dollar in. What comes out? No, I'm going to tell you what comes out. It's a Hershey's almond bar. <laughs> That's what comes out of that bad boy, a Hershey's almond bar. Um, that's what you want to turn your business into, a vending machine, not a lottery, not a lottery machine or a slot machine. Too many businesses have been doing that, and that's why they tell me they're bleeding to death. Okay? All right, let's dig into this. All right? Number one, let's answer the question over to the right-hand side. What keeps your customers, this is your customer or your niche, what keeps them up at night? What is their pain? What is their pain? Now, Andrew, you did this before, right? I want you to do it again. Dig into it. I want to make sure nothing changed and that your laser, you got even more laser focused. And, and you're saying, I'm, I'm a little bit lost. So, sweating? I mean, being uncomfortable? Being hot. Concerned about carbon monoxide, okay. right? What keeps them up at night? I'm concerned it's going to break. I'm concerned it might cost a lot. There's a lot of concerns. You only got a little box right down the side and stuff. What keeps them up at night? I'll miss work, right? I'll miss work if something breaks because maybe they don't understand your convenience business. Ask them what? What keeps them up at night? Yep. You can survey also to identify your, your marketing tighter. Do you do that? Oh, yeah. We survey. We'll, we'll get to a point I think we'll be talking about surveys. How to survey employees to, for improvement and how to survey customers for improvement. And Ron, I've taken, um, you can do what they call study groups. Mm -hmm. You invite three or four of your customers in. Sometimes you can do top customers, and sometimes you could do a top, middle, and low customer. I've eaten dinner with uh, customers. The only thing is now he, Mr. Blackwell calls me all the time to eat dinner with him. <laughs> he wants me to always go to dinner with him and his wife. <laughs> that came from the so this is where the whole free sex thing comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I had swinger being spelled out there myself. And sure as shit, at about two o'clock in the morning, the blower wheel on the second floor air handler just chirping, and she goes, "That was it. That was it." You stayed up the whole night? No, no. Oh. I was in and out of consciousness. <laughs> Looking at it, the refrigerator. <laughs> it, it chirped once, and she said that was it. But when was it a smoke all, detector? All, all the time. Was it a smoke detector, or was the furnace? No, it, it was the blower wheel. Oh, just so every rotation so it, long. It was it was the blower motor itself started. There was there was play in the wheel, and yep. occasionally it would just get to a spot where. <laughs> okay, <then>. awesome, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Okay, so give me, give me the answers to number one. Give me some feedback. Go ahead, throw it at me. What keeps them up at night? High energy bills. High energy bills, okay, it costs too much. What else? Worried they're gonna get cheated. Worried I'm gonna get ripped off. What else? Worried, the majority of the work that I do is service work, so a lot of my 
customers come from referral because they don't want to spend money on fixing equipment, so that's what I do. I will fix equipment. So the majority of my customers worry about equipment failure. Okay, good. Amy, what'd you say? Uh, worrying that you're going to do it right. Worried you're going to do it right. Or at all. What else? Stu? Uh, high utility bills. High utility bills. Brian? Um, who do I use that's safe? Who do I use that's safe? Now I'm going to show you the power, and we have a lot of questions to go to, but in the end, you're going to have this formula because everything you just told me is great. All that has to be in your marketing. How will you know that you're safe? Well, we're BBB and we're background all our guys. They're drug tested. They go through our certified gold medal service university training. We don't just let them out of there, right? Boom. We know that that's their concern. Why is it not in our marketing? Now, the very, one of the best vehicles that you'll use for these types of things is videos. Right? And I'll show you some videos I do, and I'll show you how I use the videos for training. But I'll tell you how the video gets, look, the most powerful thing in Disney World experience there is what? What's the most powerful experience? Smile. Nope, more in a smile. Like what kind of ride or something like that? The magic. Cinderella's Castle. Cinderella's Castle ties in emotion, right? It ties in visual, auditory. It ties in kinesthetic. Now, for most of us to market, you can get all of it, except you really can't get kinesthetic, right? Because they don't have a TV that comes out. But with this 3D stuff that's happening now, it might come out and touch people, right? With all this 3D market stuff. So a video will be a way that you can get this stuff out fast and easy. So you can say, hey, I'm, so, uh, I'm Mike Aguilera from Gold Metal Plumbing, Heating, Clean, Electric, and Drain Clean. I just want to let you know, we appreciate you coming here, and I want to let you know why you could feel safe when we come. Our guys are ID badged, background checked. Uh, B, you know, A plus on the BBB, we work for over 100,000 customers. You'll tell our truck when it pull up. You won't, there won't be no confusion. It's going to be yellow and black, right? You'll know our guy, he'll be in a white shirt. Not customers like, I got it, I trust it, I feel good. Ron says, I don't have to be home. I don't have to be home. That's what we're building, the power of this right now. Let's go to the next one. What are they afraid of? What are they afraid of? That's different than what keeps them up at night. Might be another, another level. You said, you know, what keeps them up? Uh, util the cost of bills, what are they afraid of? Breakdown in higher bills. They're afraid of breakdown. They're afraid of leaking. They're afraid of carbon monoxide. They're afraid of comfort. They're afraid of sweating. They're yes, Troy? Cold water. Afraid of cold water. water. Goes out. It's funny how people freak out. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants that. If we lose air conditioning in the summer, my wife's like, no big deal. Just find the best hotel. Let's go there now. She's like, we, I don't, we're not going to sweat. I'm like, cool. We got to go then, right? My stuff never breaks down. I'm like, get, get here fast. Get here fast. Okay, what are they afraid of? What, give me some different things. If they're not important to the company they call. Not important, just the number. How many companies are treating people like just the number? I could tell you price people treat people just like a number. You go in Walmart and you feel so special, don't you? You're just a number. You go, in, you go in Nordstrom's, they're like, hey, how you doing? You want me to help you shop? Want me to walk around with you? Look at how nice and friendly I am. What else? Being taken advantage. Taken advantage of. They're afraid of that. Especially today, right? Don't the news love to come after our types of businesses? Look what he did, right? Oh, God, that, that makes me so mad, that stuff. They never show you, let me, let me air five amazing companies. Well, they did. They aired us once, but they don't do that on a regular basis. Show the amazing stuff we do. No, the guy changed the water heater, and they don't ever show you. I'll never forget. I learned firsthand the power of how they manipulate what they want to. I was on People's. Joe, what was I on? People's Court? Yeah. I was on People's Court <laughs> because they get all the people, and they come out and say, they, got the, they say, you want to be on people's court. And I'm like, uh, you're going to say my company name? They're like, no, we don't have to. I'm like, okay. They said, we'll send a limo to you. We'll pick you up. We'll bring you to New York City. You'll go to it. So I'm like, okay, this will be a good experience. I'll go do it. We'll see what happens. I knew I was going to win, right? Pick me up. No, they were suing me. The people were suing me. They were unhappy for this toilet bowl problem that happened. This was, they weren't really suing you? Or is this just yeah, no, they were coming after me. They were coming after me. It's, it was Judge Judy. It's her. So they get me in a limo. I'm feeling really good. Like, this is great. New York City. I'm in a studio. I'm thinking there's going to be breakfast. There's like, there's some bag of potato chips if you're hungry. I'm like, I'm starting to get let down real fast. 
Um, they say, here's what you're going to do. They have the other people in another room. It's these older people, right? And yeah, yeah, right? I knew the challenge I was going in for. I was willing to take my chance for this experience. We have not been able to find the clip in years. Um, love to find the clip to watch it. And so now you come out, and here's what I hear as I'm walking down the aisle. Dun, dun, dun. The case of the broken toilet bowl. And I'm like, how do you not laugh? Now I know how they get the people that are like, when they come in, because they say the broken toilet bowl. So now we're there, and um, you know, Judge Judy's asking all these questions, and she's like, well, where's the guy that installed the, to installed the toilet bowl? I'm like, well, he's out of work right now. He, he got hurt on a motorcycle. It's all true. She goes, isn't that fortunate, right? She's like to dig. <laughs> now, they tell you when you go out there, are you ready? You could get really excited. You could fight back. Don't curse or anything, but you can fight back, right? They get you riled up. They want you to fight. That's why you see that stuff. So then every time she's like, um, they're like, well, where did you find Mike's company? And they're like, well, I went to the yellow page ads. And she goes, well, that's the first problem. And he's like, well, I found a really big ad. And she's like, well, that's a problem, right? And then she comes over to me, and she's like, and I go, well, well no, he came to us in the yellow page ad, the largest one. Because I'm like, I am going to so F you up, Judge Judy, right now, right? I'm like, they came to me in the yellow page ads because they, they couldn't get a smaller company to answer the phone call. So they get me saying part of it, and they're going to go to commercial. And how do you think they leave me? And I swear she did it. I'm like, well, no, they got, like, my face is like that, right? And I'm like, they don't tell you. They didn't tell the whole story. And then at the end, I win. But here's what you got to know about the shows you don't know. Nobody loses. If I win, they pay those people the total cost of everything, what they wanted back. Never knew that, right? They win no matter what. Nobody loses. And they paid me like 100 bucks to make the thing work uh, best. You know, and at the end, they bring you to the guy, and they're like, well, how do you feel? That da, 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 da. And I'm like, well, I feel amazing. I mean, we're a great company, da, 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 right? I was, I was like, it's great. And he don't like that, right? Because they want everybody to be depressed. And then I'm like, they're like, your ride's available for you. So I walk out in New York City, and I'm like, where, where, where is it? Where is it? It's a caravan that they like transport immigrants in or something. It's dirty. It, I'm, there's gum on a seat. I'm like, you're kidding me. This is what you're going to drive me on. And they drove me back to here. And I'm like, and now they called me before again. I'm like, you think you're going to drive me in a caravan? Here's the other thing. Everybody else I'm around in the room that's going to go and fight. They don't put you with the person you're going to go against. I'm like, where are you from? They're like, oh, we're from Florida. They put us up in Trump. They gave us money. I'm like, I was the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> Drive his ass to New York City. Isn't that crazy? But that will show you, you know, the media and stuff, what happens. Yeah, they have to get their own way home. Oh, uh, uh, who knows so the what they did. Bowl, have your Our guys went in, and he, he fixed the toilet bowl, and there was something with the... Um, the cast iron and stuff, he says, look, I could do a, a temporary fix. This thing might leak when I leave. And the old guy goes, yeah, I'll do it. He writes on the invoice, temporary fix. This thing may leak when I leave, but I'll do the best I can for it. He siliconed it and all this stuff. And it leaked. And the guy came back into my office in my other building. Oh, it was the other building I was in. And he's all mad on it. He's like, I want my money back. And I'm like, sir, it says right here, this thing might leak three minutes later, you know? How am I going to do that? You could have told the guy nothing. So we were so right, it was disgusting. You know, I, with what I know today, I'm like, take your 200 bucks and go, please. But I didn't know that in the beginning 10 years ago, nine years ago. He tried to sue you through the people. No, he tried to sue me. And you know when you get a driving ticket, all the lawyers call you? It's the same thing. Sorry about that, Jim. You know, Jim calls you. When, when, you, um, when you have a case filed where someone files a small claims course, a, a case, those places go and they get all those records and they sift through them and they're like, let's see if there's a guy like Mike that will be real stupid in the caravan. That's what they do. So they didn't put the name of the company? Or no, no name of the company. That was the agreement. They never said the name or anything. So I got the experience of dealing with the whole thing, which was great, and nobody knew who we are yeah. and the employees laughed about it. Would they have if you would have said, yeah, it's okay? Yeah, they would. Yeah, they would have. I wasn't willing to take that gamble because I... I didn't know. I was smart enough to say, I don't know what could happen on the show. And it's not like I trust or love Judge Judy. Like, I was like, oh, she's so trustworthy. She'll make yeah. me look good. I'm like, 
no, we'll just be real careful here. But they would have. Yep. They call me every three years. They try to get me again. And I'm like, come on. That you got your chance. The caravan ruined it forever. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, C, what are their top three daily frustrations? Now, daily is different than they're afraid of. Okay, daily frustrations could be, let me give you an example. I run out of hot water when both kids take a shower. That's a daily frustration, right? My water pressure goes down. That's a daily frustration. I have a room that's too hot. That's a daily frustration, right? My dog don't listen to me when I say come. That's a daily frustration, Andrew. You got to come and fix my dog. I should just bring the dog here and have you train her while we're in a room here. So write some of those down and let's, let's think about it. You did? What was that? I got a tankless hot water meter. What frustration does it give you? Two teenage kids. You won't get out of the shower. Oh, different problem. An hour problem. and a half later, mm. I'm pounding on the door. Solve one Go situation, down. create another. <laughs> yep. Go down the just shut the I did, I've done that. <laughs> we have done that. It's just the button, right? Yeah. Boop. I just got a shampoo in my hair. I love the instantaneous water here. So I fill up my swimming oh, pool every year with it. Yeah. Warm water. Actually, my spigot outside's warm, too. I personally love it. I'm going to put a little tank hot water heater in there or shower. That's good. Do you have a heater, too? No, I just have the tankless. Really? Yeah, and no, I... I mean for your pool. Oh, I have a heater for the pool, too. Okay. Yeah, but I like to get it, like, warm right away. Warm right away. You know what I mean? <laughs> And when I wash off my feet, when, the, when I wash off my feet, I'm so pathetic, right? When I wash off my feet, I don't want it with cold water, so I've got warm water comes out of the spigot outside. So it's crazy. What? Well. No, no well. City water. City water. Yep. yep. All right, so give me some more of the daily frustrations. I gave you guys some of them. Waiting. Waiting, daily frustration. Daily frustrations. Yep. Roger, daily frustration. What is it? I just back in. Oh, okay. Where were you? Did I miss you somewhere? Okay. No problem. No problem. This room is noisy when the burns come through. Okay. Noises. Daily frustration. Okay. Vibrating, whatever it is. Loud. Okay. What do they secretly desire most? What do they secretly desire most? Comfort. Safety, <laughs> he's dirty mind. He's house. like, free sex and air conditioning. What is it? How, how for for all Phil all to stay at their house. You don't know it. I'm helping you think through a bunch of it. I, I paid for this, uh, what you're talking about. I have not read it. Anybody right. uh, Done anything with it. Yeah, it's like, you know how long the is. I know, I know. I've, I've read a ton of them. Matter of fact, um, I had one done um, by a friend of mine, Tom Johnson, he, he owns a media group where, you know Tom Johnson? And I mean, he did you know, an amazing one where it shows a heat map of buying patterns in the industry and everything. Now the problem is, um, you know, he's a media expert, so he could help with billboard TV and radio, but if you don't know how to take this and transfer it into all the other medias, which I know how to do, if you don't, then you'll get stuff, but you won't get what you need. Who can I get to take this thing that this other guy created who, who did it? What company did it? That's a guy local in the Atlanta area. When was it done? Uh, two months ago. Oh, so it's pretty new. It is. Nice. Why did you do it? What were you thinking when you did it? Uh, I was thinking that I wanted to find out who my, who, who my actual clients were. Okay. We turned them over about 8,000 names, addresses. Okay. I can take a look at it for you. Take a look at it. See what it looks like. Get, you want to bring it tomorrow or something? Uh, or print it out? Get it emailed to you, and we'll put it on a flash drive, print it out, and we'll take a look I've at got, it. I've got this advertising stuff. Good. We'll want to look at that today when you see my stuff. And stuff. Okay, we'll take a look at it. Um, yeah, because once you get it, you got to know what to do with it or how to translate it, right? And some of these guys, what they do is they charge good money for it. They give you so much stuff that means nothing to make value, right? So we just need to look through the fine, the fine lines there. Okay, so um, do they have any built-in biases? Hold, hold on. What, what oh. was the secret? What do they secretly desire most? Uh -huh. So maybe it's comfort, maybe it's speed, maybe it's price they desire. What they desire most of the time are things they don't want to say in the open, right? Like people don't generally want to hurt people's feelings, but sometimes they just want to tell them the truth. You know, that's really their desire. They just don't know how to have it come out. Do you think that people really understand what comfort is? No, I think you have to tell them what comfort is. You have to paint a picture of, can you imagine, it's 102 outside 
and the humidity. You know those days where you're choking, you're like, ah. and then you're sitting in a house, you're on your couch, right? You're not sweating, you're cooking, there's no problems. You have to explain what, Disney explains what the experience is like. They're masters at it. Oh, you're gonna be smiling through the whole park and you're gonna smell things and the characters. They do the best job of telling people what, what an experience is like. Just watch one of their commercials. Well, I've been trying to understand how to phrase comfort in like five words or less. Why's it gotta be five words or less? Four billboard maybe. Oh, okay. I don't know if a billboard you do Comfort is the thing that would be the most attractable bait to bring people in, right? And, and I don't know if I would ever try to say comfort is the marketing vehicle for billboard. Might be marketing vehicle for direct mail or something else. Billboard might be the one thing you stand for. It might be speed, trust, credibility, wh whatever it is, that type of message. If you see my billboards now, it's like a truck plus... Um, I have the 93 and then I have, um, yeah, what was on the second piece? Cause I have two of them. Oh yeah. Lifetime guarantee, right? Equals no worry. Right. I have a hundred right now. I have a hundred. Why do you have more than me? No, I have less than you, but I have quite a few. Okay. I don't know if that's a good, I don't know if you should feel better yet. Well, I just need to know it's where the message on the on the mount you have, where it is, and what you do in that area that it says. Yeah. If you don't have a cross pollination area like this with exits in and out, understanding the patterns that people okay. drive. I've got all that understood. Okay, cool. So then it's probably working like a charm. You have different numbers so that you can track every. Uh, no, and hold that question when we get deeper into marketing. Ask me that again. We'll get there. Yeah, I, I don't have all numbers. Nope. 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 And I'll tell you why you don't need that chip. Okay. Um, do they have any built-in biases? What are their built-in biases? Google? You think that's a built-in bias? Maybe there's information out there? What else could be a built-in bias that they have in our industry? Bad dealing with a previous country. Built-in bias, right? What about the handyman? Could be a built-in bias. Handyman does all the stuff, right? Home Depot or Lowe's, built-in bias, you know? I can do it myself, built-in bias. I, I don't think it's that difficult, I just don't have time to do it. I'd actually like to hear some of the managers. Yeah. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, no, I'd say that a lot of people think that their dog is untrainable. Okay. Built-in bias, yep. Perfect marketing question, right? Perfect marketing for him. Is your dog five years old and you've given up and think he's untrainable? Five reasons why that's not true. Right. Here, here, yeah, here. Teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah, we get the nine and ten year old dogs. Just... Yep. I like that. We can teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah, that's a good one. Yep. <laughs> I will tell my wife to bring mine up on Saturday since we're coming to Frederick. All right. All right. Do they have their own language? Do they have their own language that they talk? Some. Some do, right? And and this can be this could be cultural right? It could be demographic area. So if I'm in maybe an area in, maybe I'm in a Spanish slang type area where they use this type of language, I got to talk that language in the marketing to attract it. You know who's really great at that is like Crest Toothpaste and stuff. When Crest Toothpaste is in Walgreens and stuff, right? They, do they ever put um, Crest Toothpaste, one box of red Crest Toothpaste? No. They put one that's red and one that's blue in the store. And they see what attracts the people. Then they put one with a black child and one with a white child. They see what attracts people. And once they see what gets the most turns, that's the magic and now they track it. If it changes, they do the, again, the test. So they have so, green and white too. Well, they have different mint and all that. Each one of them, they do a study, like Procter & Gamble, 99 brands, right? They have 99 brands. They're masters at this stuff. Where they put a bottle in one store has a one-looking child, and in another store has an old person. And they learned that the cost to just change the label to increase the conversion and the transaction, the frequency of it, is worth it. That's the studies they do.
And then there's different types of toothpaste now. I mean, really, are they different? There's like five different, you know, your whitening teeth, your complete. I mean, it's like, well, why yeah. can you just do it all? Do you think in like a real bad area in your area that you might have, you think they have the toothpaste for whitening teeth? I don't know. It's whatever's going to attract in that market the most. Oh, okay. Nobody easy. keeps things on any box store that doesn't make turns. Okay. If it don't turn, they'll try to solve it. It don't turn. It goes out. It's like Barnes & Noble. They'll put books in the store. If that book don't turn, they'll try putting a different location in the store. It don't turn again. They'll shove it up by the front counter. Ray, why do you think when you go in Walgreens, they have that little special thing there? They're like, hey, do you want the candy bar? It's buy one, get one free. It's always like this freaky candy bar that nobody wants. <laughs> When it don't sell, they're like, that's the closest to the door. It's out. See the philosophy? That's how you tweak the, tweak the marketing to create magic. They use a lot of those end caps and stuff, too. Yeah. Now, when you become a brand in a market, you don't need to do all the little changes. You need the changes when you're growing a brand. Coca-Cola makes one little shift, but hasn't made like it. They haven't went from red to blue to a totally blue bottle. One little shift they make. These guys make one little shift, right? They have their logo, Diet Pepsi, Caffeine. If you looked at this 10 years ago, there's a couple little shifts. I guarantee if you ask them this color, why this color, there's been a study behind that color to make Amy buy it today, right? And then Amy told me this morning there's no caffeine in it. So she feels good that there's no sugar and no whatever. Sugar. Oh, there is no sugar, just so you know. What is in it is carbonated water, caramel color, aspartame, phosphoric acid, potassium benzenite, citric acid, it's been known to cause cancer, I think. Natural flavoring, that's like pig fats and bones and stuff. Acephame potassium. And then there's a word I can't even say. It's like phenylalanine. <laughs> that's like shit they clean cars with. That's right. And phenylalanine. That sounds really you know, good. That stuff cleans toilets really well. Yeah. Good luck drinking that shit. <laughs> okay. Um, where does your target audience live? Where do they live? In a single family home. Okay. In what part? What part do they live? Okay, cool. And how many live there? How many homes there? That's the richest neighborhood. How many is not many, just so I know? Two homes? Probably about 500. 500. And you work in that area? As much as I like. How many of the 500 have you worked for in the last two years? <laughs> Who does the most work in that area? Okay, those are those. First he knows it's two, we know there's 500, we know they love him, I gotta talk the language, I wanna know who's talking to as many of them as possible. 500, I'll suck the life out of that area overnight. I can suck it, suck it dry. That didn't sound appropriate, but I can take it down, right? Dominate it, dominate it. Okay, how much do they make? How much do they make? And the only way Brian knows is because he did the profile, right? And Jerry did the profile, so how much do they make? But here's the thing. There's brackets, right, Brian? There's brackets. When you do the profiling and stuff, you understand not everybody's in 75,000 a year. So where do your people make? The major portion of them, 150. How many percentage of your list do you think are, are 150 people? Uh, I think around 60. Okay, 60%. Okay, 20% are what then? Are they above 150? That's the top. Okay, next bracket, say 100. How many could be in there? It's okay if you don't know the exact yeah, numbers. It's been about six months since we did this, but it's cool. Let me show you the power of this. 20%, let's, say. let's Let's start with a new sheet. We're going to need it for this. We're going to need it. Okay. Is every, let me do a gut check. We'll take a break in, in, in a couple minutes. You'll, you'll need it. I know some of you had to run out already. Um, are, you, are you retaining the information? Is this making sense where we're going? I know some of it's a new world. Some of you heard it before. Some of you are going to see it on a different level. Yes, sir. Just give me a little perspective here. I'm looking at 
looking at all this, I'm overwhelmed and going, how am I ever going to get all this information? And is the answer call it Melissa data or? I well, Melissa data is going to give you the information. Then you have to look at the information and make a decision. Is what they're telling me, is it good? Do I want to keep attracting those customers? A good quick test is if your conversion rate is low, average inventory is low, frequency is low, it can only be a couple things. Wrong type of customers or wrong type of employees normally. Okay, That's how I can do a test on it. If I raise the caliber of the customers, it will pull up the caliber of the employees because they'll demand more from employees. When you have a really great customer and you walk in their house, they say, look, I got a list for you. I need you to fix this, fix this, and do this right now today. And the, and the employee goes, okay, I guess I got to do it today. Okay? So it's a process. I know it seems a little overwhelming. Don't worry if you're overwhelmed. It, it all starts to come together. But the process is to take our customer list and give it to Melissa Data. Is that what you're Yeah, unless you know, unless we know, if you know it with not a guess, so many people are like, oh, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're single or they're couples, they're within 40 to 50. And I'm like, cool. That's your first ring. That's your first ring. That's 60%. Okay. What's the frequency of the 60? I don't know. It's one turn every five years. Okay. That's not great. We'll fix that. Okay. And once you get the 60% to turn every two years, now what do we got to do? We have a second ring. That's why I was asking Brian that. What's the second ring? What's the second biggest ring? He says it's 100K. People that make 100K a year and there's 10% there. Well, I can only create so much frequency demand from a customer on one trade or multiple trades. Because at the time I do all of it, I have to wait for it to break or have something else, right? Or frequency on PMs. Now I go second tier is 100K. Not getting enough here, I do this one and this one. Then there's another one which is 75K. And he says to me that there's 5% in there. That's my third ring of attack. Now I'm probably never going to go to 50K because these people can't afford this stuff and I need to send them over to another company that's a price company. That might be affiliate program, right? Like I won't even attract those type of people in my, in my list or I won't market to them. That gives me a first ring, Whew, laser. Oh shit, good, got that one, I need more. Second ring, laser, need more, third ring. So we have layers of this execution that we do. Make sense? Yeah, but I got a question as far as, you know, what do you ask the customer when you make, I mean? Well, the profiling will do it. Most lists out there that you would get will tell you what they're making. Oh, so you're buying a list. Right. You're either buying a list or giving them your list and they're telling you what's in there. If you're not sure, like let's say you don't have a list, Mike, and you say, well, I just want to start marketing and I need customers. I'm like, cool. Well, let's just take a guess what kind of people live in your area. And we can do this. We can take a little area in your town. Well, no, the reason I bring it up is because, you know, you can go on, I think it's city data or whatever, yeah. and mm -hmm. see what the average house price is, what the average income is. But I was just curious if yes. you know that this customer makes that kind of money. I'm like, no, no, I don't know that. You know, I only know it because when they fill out their card for their blender they bought, it says what is the household income. That's the only way I know because of it. And do you, you just run your whole, whole database or do you only go back seven years or five years? No, I'll go back two, three years, three years max. The seven year people are probably, if you've grown through seven years, your last three years max are the best customers because you were, you're doing business better now, and the ones before that, you weren't even doing business as good, so you had a lot of crap in there. So the three-year snap, three-year snap, yeah. And you work, the, the whole universe works off a law of averages, right? A law of averages. You could, you could asset tap probably 500 of them in the last three years. It will tell you the same information if it's 5,000 of them. But if it, I always go by price, right? I always spend about $1,000 for my size list to do it. You guys might send two, three, four hundred dollars $400 for this. It's powerful. You got to do it. Ted? It's like 350 $350 you did yours, right? It's very powerful. Very powerful. Okay. Um, you understand the rings of power? First attack, second attack, third attack. I'll do the same thing. Like if anybody doesn't have a solid list, uh, people tell me all the time, I want to go into a different market. I want to go into a different market. I'm like, awesome. 
we could find out probably the avatar of the market, but what if they have a different language or something in that market? So let's do this. Let's, let's build, test that market, and let's test it on, on the, the three perimeters, right? The 200K, the 150, and the 100. And then let's do 1,000 of each, 1,000. Let's hit this really strong, and then let's do our study on that. That will tell us where our sweet point is based on conversion average invoice, and then we could test it on frequency. This becomes my first ring because that's what my study told me. Now my first ring, this, because they give me a lot of business, doesn't make this bad that they gave me a little. Once I saturate this, I also I start going here more. And that's my second ring. And then these guys give me 70% conversion and 500 average, which is still not terrible, right? Maybe I could move them up. That'll be my third ring my third ring of entry. Do you look at this as, as a combined ticket for all your services, meaning, meaning repairs, meaning installations, meaning plumbing for a day or what? No. Okay. When I say my average invoice for plumbing is 80% and 1,800, that's just plumbing service. So, but when you type to this. I'm only looking you look for. At your, your marketing money, how did you type it? Average invoice, not counting installation. Average service. Service. Service, yeah. Because the entry point into just about everything is through service. Right. If you're marketing for new installs, like you want to sell furnaces or sewer lines, and your market's like we replace sewer lines, you're bleeding your marketing out. All, all, almost every big job comes from a service of some kind to push it. And this again was, I'm sorry, explain this just briefly. Okay, so I'm going to tap into a new market. Right. I, I know that my avatar I love now is this, but I don't know that's the exact makeup. Maybe someone who makes 200000 in Beverly Hills might be a different type of customer that makes 200000 in whatever area. I don't know that. So if I'm going to enter a new area, I'll take my 150000 a year list of my avatar, right? And I'll run, I'll run a program here. I'll run a, a layer higher and a layer lower. And then I'll study what's happening. If I find out which one's my sweet low hanging fruit, I'll own it. I'll penetrate the hell out of it. But it doesn't make this bad. This is still money. I own the best first, then I'll go to the second. Now, don't get me wrong. When you look at my brand, right? I went for a brand to make it look like a FedEx, right? A simple professional brand. If I decide to go into a new market over here, and this market that I want to penetrate in, say I want to start another brand. It's, it's for women only, single women only. And I want to penetrate this brand really solid. I might create a violet truck and create a name just for that attracts only women. So I'll have a, a second en entity. I'll have one that attracts this, and I'll build this. Like in New York City, and I don't know enough about New York, but they have that area down there where a lot of the uh, gay people live and stuff. Does anybody know what that's called? It's um, Chelsea. a Chelsea or something, right? Like if I'm going to work in that area, like my brand probably won't attract them. Now, if that's my avatar, which we work for a lot of those couples too, right? I don't, it doesn't matter to me. What's that? <laughs> which part? Hit me. Oh, I work for them now. I work for them now. If, and it could be limiting, but if I have a happy couple, male and female, right. is that going to be the best bait for them? Why not? But if I had two females and two males, right. I would talk to them. I want to talk to the niche, okay? So I can go into that niche and use the language. I might use the rainbow flag on it or something, right? Or maybe I'll have a rainbow flag truck. I'll dominate. I could be the market dominator for, okay, plumbing service company, Rainbow trucks. It could be. Tons. At the end of the day, I won't care because you make lots of money, right? Can you use direct mail? As your... When we get to strategy, ask me that again. Because there's no, there's no, when you think it's one thing that will enter any area or explode one area, you're, you're, you're wrong. There's so, no one egg in one basket. It's right, but it, multiple testing? eggs. Testing and not just direct mail. Okay. No. I might, test it. I might test it with a little bit of banner ad, a little test of direct mail. I might throw one little billboard. Most people think billboards are like huge. Like I buy billboards on highways for $350 a month. 
We're in the most expensive, one of the most expensive billboard on the planet here. Um, I might throw uh, some kind of little, uh, uh, I might do a, a geo on pay-per-click here, right? I might throw a TV commercial that only talks just to this area, like channel two at night or some crazy something. So how long are you testing? 90 days, I'll test it. 90 days will give me a good test. Normally you'll know in 30 to 45 days if it's working at all. Yeah. First, I got to know where I want to go, and second's the strategy. Second's the strategy. All right, let's take a 10-minute break, okay? You guys are getting a little bit glazed over on me here.